Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Joshua, chapter 17, verse 3. Tonight is a night for the ladies. But Zalopha had the son of Hefer, the son of Gilead, the son of Machir, the son of Manasseh, had no sons but only daughters. And these are the names of his daughters. Mala, Noah, Hogla, Milka, and Terza. They came near before Eleazar the priest, before Joshua the son of Nun, and before the rulers, saying, The Lord commanded Moses to give us an inheritance among our brothers. Therefore, according to the commandment of the Lord, he gave them an inheritance among their, bro their father's brothers. Ten shares fell to Manasseh, besides the land of Gilead and Bashan, which were on the other side of the Jordan, because the daughters of Manasseh received an inheritance among his sons, and the rest of, rest of Manasseh's sons had the land of Gilead. For people who say that women were treated as only property back in the Old Testament times, well, for the most part, they were right. That's pretty much how women were treated by pretty much every culture on the face of the planet. I would hasten to add, though, that Israel's treatment of women, while not up to New Testament standards and certainly not up to modern American standards, it was, um, it was a slice above the rest. I would like anyone watching this video, and I know... Right now the videos have very few views. My biblical videos don't have many viewers. That's okay. God willing, that will change one day. In fact, God, please change that in Jesus' name, that your truth may go out to more people. By the way, I haven't forgotten about the long video. I'm still working through audio issues. It's, uh, life is so busy and I'm trying to figure stuff out. And I'm not good at figuring things out. And that was besides the point. Anyway, I would challenge anyone who's specifically a critic of the Bible and a critic of Christianity, or of Judaism even for that matter. Find me another culture that allowed women to own property under any circumstances back in the Bronze Age. Find me one other. Because Israel did it. It's right there. I'm pointing at my Bible. You can't see it. It's off camera, but it's the Bible. Women were allowed to own property under specific circumstances. That is... In my mind, amazingly cool. God was looking out for the ladies. He cared. He cares. He's always cared. A lot more than we men do, and a lot, and he definitely cares the way we should. So, just kind of a, a little uh, in the face of anyone who's like, yeah, God and the Bible are anti women and anti feminism and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, the guy's given the um, the role of leadership. He's he's pretty much put in charge. That doesn't mean women are doormats. That doesn't mean they're worthless. That doesn't mean they don't get to own anything or do anything or have any say. They had charge of property back before Jesus even came to pass. In fact, women whose testimonies really didn't count for anything in court back in the back at the beginning of New Testament times, they were the first witnesses of the resurrection of Jesus. God thinks pretty highly of you ladies, to any who may be watching. So, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure there will be critiques of that, and people will say, well, it's not enough, not enough was done, not enough is still being done. I would just like to say that God has always been on the vanguard of women's rights. Not making them masters, not saying they're better than men, but saying that they are human beings, and they're worthwhile, and they're worth consideration, their thoughts... And their, and their abilities are worth our time. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you guys. God bless.